Joining us now, the Illinois Democratic Congressman Mike Quigley. He's a member of the House Intelligence Committee. Congressman, thanks for joining us. Thank you. Happy holidays to all. Thank you uh, to you as well. What evidence are you seeing, Congressman, of Republican pushback or interference with your investigation? Yeah, where to begin? I think first it's the rogue uh, partisan investigations that they have launched and undertaken without even talking to us about it. Uh, second, uh, they what have do you, What do you mean by the rogue, the rogue partisan investigations? Explain what you mean by that, Congressman. Uh, look, the Republicans are undergoing investigations of, of activities that took place a long time ago, and when in doubt, they attack Hillary Clinton. Uh, they never spoke to us about uh, going after the Canadian uranium uh, investigation and others. So it's clear that their legal strategy is, oh, oh yeah, what about you, what about Hillary Clinton? So that makes it difficult to go forward just on the Russian investigation. And on the Russian investigation. They have refused subpoenas on key areas. Uh, we are dozens of witnesses that still need to come forward. Uh, in the meantime, we probably need some of our key witnesses back uh, under subpoena so that they'd actually answer key questions. So there are rushing interviews without documentations. Uh, as of the time I left yesterday, there were no interviews scheduled for January, and there were interviews scheduled while we were undertaking votes uh, out of the Washington, D.C. area. As you know, Congressman, the FBI Deputy Director Andrew McCabe, he testified in front of your committee behind closed doors this week. Uh, what can you tell us about the focus of the questioning and his response? Yeah, it's really the third prong of why I believe the Republicans are trying to uh, uh, create a shiny object, a distraction or an obstruction to the Russian investigation. Uh, they absolutely have no shame. Uh, I think what they're doing is attacking a war hero, uh, a person with impeccable credentials, bipartisan support uh, before Mr. Mueller. They're going after the FBI. They're going after the Justice Department because, frankly, the investigation is getting scary. It's reached the White House. Uh, the indictments that have taken place, uh, the plea deal that has taken place, I think, frankly, scares them. And they're taking extreme measures going after those uh, undertaking the investigation. What can you tell us, uh, if you can tell us, whether uh, the uh, Deputy FBI Director McCabe actually corroborated former FBI Director James Comey's uh, testimony about conversations uh, Comey had with uh, President Trump? Yeah, I, I honestly can't talk about what, what the testimony was. Uh, I'll corroborate it was uh, the discussions have been tense. And uh, I believe when you take all this into totality, it, it proves the point I made before. They're going after those who are accusing them, trying to undermine the investigation. They literally have no shame. Bloomberg is reporting that uh, Steve Bannon, the former chief uh, White House strategist, and Corey Lewandowski, who was the former Trump campaign manager, will be called to testify before your committee. Uh, talk, about, or, uh, talk about that. Have you been informed that the two of them will be coming before the House Intelligence Committee? Uh, it's, it's interesting. I'm on the Intel Committee. Uh, I often hear news uh, first uh, coming from news media sources. So uh, if that's the case, it's the first time hearing about it. And honestly, it would be welcome news because it tells me that at least some level, the investigation is going to go forward. There's been uh, some pushback, as you know, by the Republicans over the special prosecutor, the special counsel, Robert Mueller's team. Uh, do you see this as a, a real challenge to, to Mueller's credibility uh, and this fear that at least some of your Democratic colleagues have that it's possible Mueller will actually be fired? I think that uh, the biggest concern for 2018 is that we face a constitutional crisis. I believe firing the uh, investigator Mueller would be a constitutional crisis. Uh, I fear that there will be preemptive firings or pardons by this president. It, cl it clearly gets under his skin and I think unnerves the president as this investigation goes forward. And frankly, he, t he certainly speaks in an irrational basis. It would have been a lot easier and I think more productive if the President of the United States had acknowledged what the intelligence community already said a year ago now, that the Russians did this to benefit his candidacy and to hurt 
Hillary Clinton's and encouraging and requiring White House staff to cooperate and people who were involved in his uh, campaign to cooperate. He's done just the opposite. And I think elements of obstruction have taken place, uh, specifically, for example, uh, the firing of Comey for what the president said was that Russian thing. In that meeting with the, the Russian uh, foreign minister uh, and uh, the Russian ambassador at the time to the United States. Uh, let's get to a different subject while I have you. Very quickly, Congressman, you're a member of the House Appropriations Committee. The president tweeted this today, and I'll read it to you. Quote, at some point, and for the good of the country, I predict we will start working with the Democrats in a bipartisan fashion. In structure would be a perfect place to start after having foolishly spent seven trillion dollars in the Middle East uh, he's referring to the wars in uh, Iraq and Afghanistan uh, it, it is time to start rebuilding our country uh, so what, what's your response to the president have you had any indications at least to this point that the Republican leadership in the House wants to start working with the Democrats to get major infrastructure legislation passed that could cost hundreds of billions of dollars if not trillions uh, of dollars uh, your district in Chicago in the suburbs of Chicago cl clearly you need some major infrastructure bridges roads uh, etc Right. Illinois roads are, are rated the worst in the country. Uh, you, you talk about infrastructure in my district. In the last month of the Obama administration, working with Republicans, we were able to get a billion dollars to help rebuild the CTA, the L, right? It carries more people in a month than uh, Amtrak does in a year. Obviously really important, and there is a willingness among some Republicans uh, to support bipartisan efforts to rebuild our country. But I think we've made it much more difficult when the Republicans passed a measure which is going to add a trillion dollars to our deficit. There's going to be a lot less revenue to do this. Early indications were we were going to do tax repatriation, right? Bring those tax dollars home to rebuild the infrastructure. I'm not sure where they're going to find the resources to do this because they certainly don't want to raise revenues. They don't want to raise taxes. Well, so you have to pay for this somehow. The, uh, the president during his campaign talked about a public-private partnership. He backed off on that. I think he embarrassed the vice president said, that doesn't always work, does it, uh, Mr. Pence? Uh, he said it in a different manner. So, uh, look, I'd love to do it. It should be our highest priority. It's probably the easiest to work on a bipartisan basis. I think that made it a lot tougher. And I think you're going to see uh, the deficit hawks come out of the Republican base again. And, and finally, do you agree with the president? He said $7 trillion was wasted in the Middle East. I think he's referring to the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. Was all of that money a waste? Well, not all of that money was a waste. But I think the war in Iraq was a mistake. And there was a tremendous amount of waste uh, under the Bush administration starting that war and continuing it and in the manner in which we did. It's one of the things that uh, has created this massive debt and deficit that we have to address. It wasn't just the trillions of dollars, uh, it was lives lost as well. A lot of U.S. service members uh, were killed in those wars right. in Iraq and Afghanistan, and, and tens of thousands came home very seriously injured as well. And it's interesting the president says uh, basically that all of that was foolish after having foolishly spent some uh, seven trillion dollars in the Middle East it's time to start rebuilding our country so he's got very strong views on those wars uh, a, a final right. thought I, uh, and Congressman, I would never before say, I let you go I, I just don't want to I want to suggest that don't want to suggest that any Americans lives were lost in vain I always uh, respect our service ones members and particularly ones that we've lost uh, I, I do think it's appropriate to question why we ever got into that war uh, and the extraordinary loss of lives on both sides, uh, the extraordinary financial costs which impair our ability to do anything else we want to do to take care of Americans and our friends uh, across the sea. And I think the scar of the hurt that took place on the United States reputation for getting into those wars and their aftermath, something we're going to live with for a long time. Congressman Quigley, thanks so much for joining us. Merry Christmas to you and a Happy New Year.